Hey guys, Tyler here, and thank you for checking out this video. And the newest expansion, Dragonflight, is finally upon us, which means we have a new Marksman Hunter guide for you guys today. So, this video is going to cover everything you need to know about Tier 1 of Raid, as well as Season 1 of Mythic Plus. We're going to be talking about rotation, talents, showing you some weak auras, talking about tier set, and so much more. The best part is, no more covenants. So, let's get started. Mr. Eggplant presents... And then a real quick disclaimer for this video, so if there are any changes throughout the tier, which it does happen from time to time, they will be found in the description of the video and in the pinned comments, since I can't update this living, breathing guide, if you will, uh, once it goes live on YouTube. And then also, I will be streaming my uh, my adventures in the Vaults of the Incarnates, which will be the first raid of Dragonflight with my guild Drexit of Zangermarsh. We will be live on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for sure at 6 o'clock Central Time. We'll be doing that both on Twitch and YouTube. And then also, uh, down below in the description, there is a link to my Discord. I would encourage you guys to come hang out. It's been an amazingly uh, rapid growth to the community I have there. We're talking about all things Marksman Hunter, anything World of Warcraft related, talking about your pets, everything. It's been a great, positive community. I would encourage you guys to come hang out. And then you might even get to see some of my videos or give me feedback in upcoming videos. So let's go ahead and jump into the guide. So this first section is going to be what's new for you on your Marksman Hunter here in Dragonflight. And the first ability is a defensive one, which is something we definitely need, which is Fortitude of the Bear. So it takes the place of Survival of the Fittest if you are a Lone Wolf Marksman Hunter or running with a tank pet, and it just gives you a 20% bonus to your maximum health and heals you for that 20%. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice cooldown to couple with others, and it has a relatively low cooldown of 2 minutes. And the next ability is going to be Death Chakram. It's not necessarily new. This was the Necrolord Covenant ability uh, in Shadowlands, and it bounces up to seven times, gives you focus every time it bounces. It can bounce up to seven different targets, or it can bounce to one target seven times, so you still get that bonus. And whenever it bounces to the target, that target takes 10% bonus damage from the hunter. The next ability is going to be Wailing Arrow, which is the Sylvanas Legendary Bow ability from Season 2 and onward of Shadowlands. So it's a one minute cooldown, it's an AoE ability, it does a large percent of your attack damage, I believe it's just a little bit more than an aim shot, and also silences most um, lesser beings, it doesn't, it's not going to interrupt a boss for example, and it does hit everything within 8 yards of the target. Then we come to Unerring Vision, which is not new, but it might be new to most of you because it was only like me and like 20 other people playing Marksman in BFA. So this was a BFA go-to Azerite trait, and it just gives you a stacking amount of crit per second of true shot. So it's when it caps out at 10 seconds, you're going to get 10% bonus chance to crit, and then that lasts for the rest of the duration of your true shot. And then thanks to Dragonflight, it does increase the crit damage you do while it's up by a percentage as well. And thanks to the Hunter Tree, we are now seeing some survival-only abilities making their way over to our Marksman build. So we have Steel Trap, which was, like I said, formerly a survival-only ability. It's a 30-second cooldown trap that causes the target to bleed over 20 seconds, and bleeds are going to be very important to your Marksman Hunter damage here in Dragonflight. The next ability is another passive, which we love passives, which is going to be Poison Injection. So whenever your Serpent Sting ticks, it adds latent poison dot stacks to the enemy, stacking up to 10 times, and whenever you hit that enemy with an aim shot, it removes those stacks and does damage based on the amount of stacks uh, it removed. Hydra's Bite is also an option for Poison Injection. It's fairly simple, another survival-only ability previous, and your Serpent Sting will hit two other nearby targets for a full duration of a serpent sting dot so that's just a nice amount of bonus um, dot cleave then we have bullet storm and bullet storm is going to be very important for your aoe build whenever you have your tier set which we'll talk about here in a little bit later in the video so similar to your vulnerability window from legion so whenever your rapid fire or aim shot bounces thanks to ricochets from trick shots your multi-shot damage will be increased stacking up to 10 times for a total of a 70% increased damage for those 15 seconds it does not increase the duration of that 15 seconds so that's why i say it is kind of a vulnerability window in my beta runs multi-shot was very often my third or fourth highest damage in the entire dungeon 
And this last set of combinations of abilities are really going to give Marksman Hunter their identity for the first tier of Dragonflight. So first up we have Salvo, which is basically the uh, Necrolord Unity ability uh, from Shadowlands. So whenever you use your volley or multi-shot, it applies two explosive shot dots on two different enemies that were hit uh, by said ability. It's a 45 second cooldown. The only difference from the Necrolord Unity ability was that it wasn't attached to your uh, Death Chakram at all. So next up we have Eagle Talon's True Focus, which was a legendary in Shadowlands. And in fact, I made a video way back when in the beta for Shadowlands that I was so looking forward to playing th with this. And I never got to play with it because it just didn't have enough damage at the time. But now it's in the Talon trees in its full glory and let me tell you it is something it's really exciting and in fact it fixes true shot exactly like i said way back when in that video uh, so you basically don't need to use any sort of steady shots while you are in your true shot window you can just focus on doing all of the damage and it really makes true shot feel like the good strong two minute cooldown that it is next up we have death blow and razor fragments and the reason i added these together is i will always take them together uh, because death blow is basically just the venthyr flayed shot instead of it being a dot it just has a chance to proc whenever you use your rapid fire or your aim shot it's uh 15 for aim shot and i believe 25 percent for rapid fire and you can use that kill shot on any target and then thanks to razor fragments it increases the damage of that said uh, death blow by 50 percent which is not a small amount and then also causes the target and up to six targets around it to bleed for 25 percent of that kill shot damage and then last but not least on what's new we have an og coming back from legion which is legacy of the wind runners plus wind runners guidance uh, so we're going to be talking all about those wind arrows it's all completely passive passive is usually king it's much easier to play around versus the uh, wailing arrow which we'll talk about here in a few minutes you can certainly play either one of those but looking at legacy of the wind runners so every time you use an aim shot which we will be using them quite often you have a 20 percent chance to proc six wind arrows at your target and then thanks to wind runners guidance each one of those arrows has a three percent chance to give you 10 seconds of true shot i found in the beta this does not proc very much i'm hoping they see a buff to it i know that we're like in f tier right now in all of the sims and all the videos that people are putting out on youtube i'm still super excited to play uh, my marksman hunter here in dragonflight so let's go ahead and look at the next section of the video which will be talking about talents so first up we have our single target talent so we automatically get kill shot to start off so two points in post haste one point in improved kill shot because that's the only throughput damage wise we have in the top part of the tree two points in natural mending and then one point each for counter shot then survival of the fittest misdirection and tar trap and the reason i'm picking tar trap over concussive shot for example is it opens up our ability to pick trank shot uh, so i'm going to go ahead and put it in my base build it's kind of an encounter to encounter basis you might need it you might not but we're going to go ahead and add it to our build and then we have our first choice node so it's either going to be lone survivor or nature's endurance i'm already used to survival of the fittest being a three minute cooldown so i'm going to make it a stronger three minute cooldown with nature's endurance two points in born to be wild two points in rejuvenating wind and then one point in binding shot to open up the last set of abilities here so it's going to be one point in hunter's avoidance which is basically just six percent avoidance baked into our build and then two points in pathfinding now we have one more point left to spend to get to the very bottom of the tree and you have a couple of different picks to choose from you could either put a point in concussive shot you could put one over here in scare beast uh, improved trank shot or even camouflage i'm going to go ahead and put it over here in improved trank shot but you can easily put it in any of those other options and then it opens up the bottom part of our tree so two points in keen eyesight which opens up death chakram which is our goal for this tree much like true shot getting down to unerring vision is over here and then two points in serrated shots it makes our bleed so much more important and impactful and then let's go ahead and add another bleed to the build which would be steel trap i'm not a huge fan of steel trap this was a survival only ability beforehand but it is a bleed and bleeds are so strong and so important to our overall damage profile here in season one let's add another bleed why not let's double down on the bleed so we'll put another ma master marksman uh, bleed in the picture we're going to be critting a lot the way it is already and then one point in serpent sting one point in poison injection and then our final point is going to unfortunately go into arctic bola since there's really not any other damage outside of having a pet in this tree 
And now let's go ahead and take a look at the marksman side of the tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one point in aim shot, one point in crack shot, one point in improved steady shot, and two points in precise shots. Now I pick my one point in lone wolf, and then I pick rapid fire and I augment it in every one of my builds. So I have rapid fire here, two points in streamline, which opens up part of the bottom of the tree, and then I pick either lethal shots or surging shots. Surging shots is what I'm going to pick, but I think lethal shots will be better by the end of the expansion. So I'm going to go ahead and pick surging here, and then put one point in death blow and one point in razor fragments. And honestly, I would pick these together always. Not just because that razor fragment gives you the bleed, which will you know be augmented even further thanks to our uh, serrated shots, but it just makes that uh, kill shot do 50% more damage, and it's not a small amount, and it's something that you can use regardless of health on a an encounter. Then we'll put two points over here in careful aim, one point in target practice to make those arcane shots even stronger, one point in double tap, one point in Serpent Stalker's Trickery. So now we have three points left to open up the bottom of the tree to get down to our unerring vision. And this is where you have a couple of options. I'm actually going to forego putting two points in Steady Focus because we need to get to True Shot. So it's either two points in Steady Focus and one point elsewhere or one point in Volley and then to, to move around the tree as well. Uh, because of that, I'm actually going to pick Volley because this does a fair amount of damage even on a single target encounter. And it does free us up another point to put uh, points in in, um, a lock and load or another point in bullseye for example so we're going to go ahead and put our one point in volley and then i'm going to go ahead and either choose between two points in focus aim or two points in hunter's knowledge i'm going to go ahead and pick the sure-fired bonus damage with focused aim to do 10 percent more damage with our aim shot and our rapid fire so now we're going to go ahead and augment our best ability true shot two points in eagle talons true focus and then pick between calling the shots or unerring vision i really wish these were both down here uh and they weren't a choice because they're just that strong i love them that would be the bfa marksman hunter coming out of me but i'm going to go ahead and put one point in unerring vision and now we have six points left to spend so i'm going to put one point here in lock and load and then one point in bullseye this would be my normal pick so now you have four points left if you want to pick a a wailing arrow build you certainly can and you would run want to run with readiness i have found through feedback i enjoy playing wailing arrow and readiness but not everybody does and that's completely fine so for this video i'm going to make the the build that's easier for uh anybody to pick up their marksman hunter and play and do well so because of that i'm going to put one point in bullseye then two points in legacy of the wind runners and one point in Windrunner's Guidance. These haven't been proccing nearly as much as I think they should be in the beta, but I think the passive from it will just be bonus damage. And if you get those true shot windows, they can be very strong and even just help your focus regen during that time. I really would wish they would just increase this from 3%, maybe a little more, maybe 5%, maybe even 6%, maybe if they want to double it. And I think it would be that much stronger because of it. And then like we've been augmenting our uh, bonus damage from aim shot, that's what Legacy of the Windrunners does as well for all of those arrows. So those arrows are going to do more damage the more your um, aim shot does. Now let's go ahead and shift over to a Mythic Plus or an AoE talent build. And I'm not going to talk about these too much just because they're going to be pretty much the same as what we just talked about just a second ago. I did get a lot of flack for not uh, adding Trank Shot into my build in some of my beta videos. But keep in mind, if you don't need to purge anything in a dungeon, it's kind of a wasted point. Although, to be fair, there's not too many other options up here in this part of the tree. But I will put a point in Entrapment. I really like having the root with my Tar Trap. I do that only for AoE Mythic Plus situations. So then we'll still put a point over here in Nature's Endurance and keep moving down the tree. Uh, Binding Shot is much more important this go around than it is in a single target build, but points here. And then we are still trying to unlock Death Chakram. That is the goal. After that, we need to unlock Explosive Shots. We'll put two points in Arctic Bola to do that. I hate that. It really needs to be at least one point. And then I'll put one point in Explosive Shot. So thanks to Salve over here and Explosive Shot, we're going to be having quite a bit of our damage be uh, that Explosive Shot damage in a dungeon run. And so the last main ability that we're going to pick up, we have to put two points in Master Marksman to get down to it, is once again Poison Injection. Now, some people might like to do Hydra's Bite, uh, but keep in mind later on in the expansion, the or at least in this first tier, the bow from the last boss in Raid 
really wants you to only cleave off of one enemy. So if that's the case, Poison Injection is great for a hybrid build for both single target and for AoE, and that's what my builds try to do uh, for my AoE Mythic Plus builds. I want something that's going to work for both uh, single target bosses, whether they are uh, tyrannical or fortified, and then same goes for trash. So Poison Injection is my pick there. And then my final pick would be Serrated Shots. Now, if you are somebody who wants to run with camo in a, a dungeon run, that's completely fine. I would move the Entrapment Point from uh, over here over to camouflage or if you don't need trank shot perfect you send that right over there so let's go ahead and look at the marksman specific side of the tree so a lot of this is going to be the same as well uh, i still like to put points in improved steady shot it's just quality of life is always up there thanks to that careful aim put a point over here in lone wolf and then i'm going to go over here on the left side of the tree because our goal is to get to salvo so rapid fire two points in streamline still like I said before, surging shots, putting points in death blow and razor fragments, one point in multi shot, and then trick shots, one point in volley, and now we kind of have to add some more points up here, which is completely fine. So we're going to put a point here in target practice to unlock double tap, and then finally serpent stalkers trickery once again. Now we can put one point down here in bullet storm, which is one of the new abilities, and then also salvo, and salvo just gives us those two uh applications of explosive shot on targets that were hit by multi-shot or volley uh, keep in mind make sure you don't throw explosive shots together over the top of these salvo explosive shots because sometimes they like consume each other and then you only get one explosion uh, that's something that i found out the hard way in uh, the beta after that true shot is our last big ability still going to be going down here to pick unerring vision and that gives us four points left to spend i am a homer for lock and load i absolutely love this ability always have always will and then i'm going to put one point in bullseye after that we have two points and this is where you can kind of flex i would say that this this build maybe if you, you wouldn't put a point in uh improved steady shot for example you might have three points to work with if you are going to be pulling huge packs light ammo is a good point here if you are not i probably wouldn't do it because there's no reason to hit seven different targets uh, if you're not going to be pulling seven different targets. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and once again forego Wailing Arrow and Readiness. You could easily do that. It's only two points. And if that if you are someone who wants to run with Wailing Arrow, it's significantly better in uh, AoE versus single target. So you could go one point there and one point in Readiness and play around that. However, I'm going to go ahead and, and remove those two points and go ahead and put them up here in Focused Aim. Or you could put one point in Focused Aim and finish out your Bullseye and put one point there. There's one dungeon in particular that the boss is pretty much going to be in that 20% zone for most of the encounter, and this bullseye will be an absolutely strong ability. This is what my base Mythic Plus build will look like, so let's go ahead and move on to the next section of the video. Now that we have our talent builds, let's go ahead and take a look at a stat priority for our Marksman Hunter here for the first tier of Dragonflight. It's going to be very basic since we don't really have to worry about diminishing returns or like haste plateaus just yet in the game. So because of that, our main stat is going to be weapon DPS. I know it sounds kind of weird, but that is going to be the best way to increase the damage on your Marksman Hunter. And so that means whatever the better weapon is, is what you're going to be using. doesn't matter what the secondaries are. There is one exception, which would be the the bow off of the final boss of the raid has a very nice uh, equip bonus that you want to use but other than that weapon dps will be king followed up by our main stat which is going to be of course agility then we come to the secondary so it's going to go crit strike and i have it right around 25 or 30 percent much like i did at the beginning of shadowlands uh, th that could drop down to around 20 to 25 percent as well since we do have a lot of crit already baked into our build it just really depends on what kind of gear you get but that's the numbers i'm going to be shooting for i'm going to be looking to circle that 25 and then dump all the rest into mastery haste and versatility and speaking of those then after crit would be mastery then haste, and then finally versatility. And then there is the asterisk there. So if you are doing higher keys, versatility is so important because keys are gonna be tuned much higher than they have in the past. Uh, and Marksman is very, very squishy. If you've played Marksman, you already know that. Uh, but if you are doing high keys or doing some PVP, versatility automatically becomes that best secondary stat that you can get. And these next couple of sections are going to be talking about your rotation priority for both single target and AoE for your Marksman Hunter here in Dragonflight. So starting off with single target, make sure that you're using your kill shot on cooldown even during your true shot windows when you're running with death blow 
and razor fragments. Very important because that thing hits like a truck and adds another bleed into your build. Then if you are running with steady focus with the two points in the marksman hunter tree, make sure you're using your steady shot in pairs to take advantage of that 8% haste buff and you want to shoot for at least 80 to 85, I'd even like to say 90% uptime on the buff itself. Then you'll make sure and use double tap on cooldown and thanks to careful aim, if your target is above 70% health, use that on aim shot and if it's below 70% health, use it on rapid fire. Then we get the Necrolord ability Death Chakram. Make sure you're using that on cooldown, but you can delay it just a little bit. I wouldn't delay it more than 10 seconds if True Shot is coming off of CD. That way all of those True Shot abilities are going to hit for 10% more damage. Then make sure you're using your Steel Trap on cooldown and make it a priority below 20% health because thanks to Serrated Shots, it will do 40% more damage. So it's very, very important to get those bleeds out there at the very end, particularly if you're running with um, Bullseye as well because you're going to have a lot more crit in your build for that last 20%. Then we come to Volley or Explosive Shot. If you've taken either of those, those go at the number 6 slot. I'm personally running uh, Volley right now for single target, but in uh, PvP, for example, you might be running with Explosive Shot, so you still want to make sure and use that on cooldown. Then we'll come over here with our True Shot on cooldown, and that is something that I have connected to my Racial and any sort of like on-use trinkets or uh, potions, you know, that sort of thing. And thanks to Unerring Vision, we do get a bonus crit chance there and crit damage. Then we'll make sure that you're using your aim shots and rapid fire on cooldown. And please, 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 if you want to up your damage as a marksman hunter, do not let your aim shots cap on charges. You only get two. You want to make sure it's always generating another one. Now, if you are running with Wailing Arrow, particularly if you're using readiness, you don't feel like you have to use this on cooldown. That's something that uh, some players are struggling with because they're feeling like they have to use it as soon as it comes up. I don't even now... Uh, back in Shadowlands, I wasn't using it on cooldown and it made it so much easier to play around. But if you are running with readiness, make sure you've used all your aim shots and rapid fire and be very close to full focus before you actually fire off that Wailing Arrow. These last couple of things are just dumps, so make sure that you're using your arcane shot to dump those precise shot procs. When you're outside of your true shot windows, you want to use every single one of those arcane shots. And plus, our tier is going to empower those, so those will go higher up in the priority because then Every time the arcane shot will crit, it will cause your next aim shot to cause the target to bleed for 40% of that damage over six seconds. And then finally, make sure that you're using steady shot as needed for focus regeneration. Now let's look at the Mythic Plus or AoE rotation priority. So at number one, much like with single target, use kill shot on cooldown, but only if you get the death blow proc. So for example, every time your uh, trick shots drops off, you will get razor fragments to proc, but it doesn't mean that your kill shot will be the empowered one that's used on any target regardless of health. So if you get death blow, use kill shot. That way it spreads that bleed. Then if you are running with Hydra's Bite instead of poison injection down in the hunter tree, they make Make sure you're using your Serpent Sting effectively to spread that dot to as many targets as possible. Then use Explosive Shot on cooldown. I like to use it with at least three targets, particularly if you've only got a couple of targets in front of you right now and you see another pack coming, I would probably hold it. Other than that, use it on cooldown. Then coming in at number four is going to be Double Tap, using that on cooldown. And thanks to Careful Aim, much like with Single Target as well, use it on Aim Shot, Above 70, and Rapid Fire any other time. Use your Death Chakram on cooldown, and much like with single target as well, you can delay that uh, for your true shot to come up, but I wouldn't do it for more than 10 seconds. Then use Volley on cooldown, does a hefty amount of damage, and if you are picking Salvo, gives you Salvo every 45 seconds, which gives you those two uh, dots of explosive shot for free, even if you're not running with uh, the actual explosive shot talent. And multi-shot can do that as well, so it's whichever one every 45 seconds. Then at number seven, we have true shot on cooldown, and it still, thanks to Unerring Vision, gives you that bonus crit chance and crit damage overall. Use multi-shot to gain trick shots, that's very important, and to also use those precise shot procs, and thanks to bullet time, those are gonna be doing so much damage. I know it's bullet storm, but to me, it's always going to be bullet time. And that's gonna do a large amount of damage. In fact, multi-shot will most likely be like the third fourth third or fourth highest damage in your mythic plus runs then follow that up by using your aim shot and rapid fire on cooldown but make sure you have trick shots first it adds more damage in the build thanks to bullet storm and the bonus damage for multi-shot but you just need the the trick shots to make the bullet 
uh, Storm stronger. And finally, these last couple of abilities, Wailing Arrow, use that on cooldown and like for single target. If you have readiness, make sure you use all of your aim shots and rapid fire and be near or to be full focus before you actually uh, cast the ability. And then finally, use Steady Shot as needed for focus regeneration. Let's take a look at what a single target opener would look like, then I'll show you an example. So first you're going to want to pre-cast your double tap with about 8 seconds left on your pull timer, and if you are running with steady focus, you want to start casting both of those steady shots with about 2 seconds left on the timer. And if you are not running with steady focus, then you want to pre-cast your aim shot with about 2.5 seconds left in the pull timer, just depends on your haste. Then you want to go Steel Trap, then Death Chakram, use your True Shot macro that has all of your or, uh, racials, any sort of trinkets, or even your prepot in there, and then you'll use your volley, aim shot, rapid fire, aim shot, and then you'll just go to town like normal. And now let's go ahead and look at what an AoE opener would look like. And this section is going to be the consumables and enchants for you for the first tier of Dragonflight. And this is probably that's what's going to get changed the most down in the pinned comments or in the description of the video. Just because I don't want to go to raid the first week and have to drop like 10k on consumables. I think that's probably going to be pretty ridiculous. But if you're going to be running with your flask, make sure you pick your file of static empowerment. Then for the pre-pot, you can get those from the cauldrons that your guild can drop for you or your group. So the more expensive one is going to be the fleeting elemental potions of ultimate power. That's the expensive one. And then there is the cheaper version, which is just the fleeting elemental potion of power. So don't have ultimate power there. Uh, then we go ahead and come down here to food. And the best food is going to be giving you main stat, which is going to be the horde of draconic delicacies. Then we have our enchant, so for cloak you have either graceful avoidance or regenerative leech. Then for your chest you have accelerated agility, gives you a nice amount of uh, main stat on your chest piece. Then bracers for devotion of avoidance or devotion of leech. For boots, we have a Plain Runner's Breeze. That's going to be the best for you. That's going to have a little bit of speed in your build. And actually, uh, Marksman's going to have quite a bit of speed kind of baked into our build, which is going to be always a good thing. Movement speed is king, after all. For your ring enchants, I would pick Mastery. So it's going to be Devotion of Mastery or Devotion of Crit, if you want a little bit more crit in your build. Then as for your weapon, I did not get to test these out nearly as much as I would have liked to in the beta, but I'm going to go ahead and pick Sophic Devotion. And now we have weak auras and macros. I'm going to start with the macros, and I'm not going to talk too much about these. Most of these are just going to be stop casting macros you see on most of my main abilities. Uh, some others would include cursor macros for volley. You can even do a mouse over for kill shot. I don't have it on here, but I can add it to the uh, description of this video. And then also for like arcane shot and for aim shot, I have a uh, do not stop the cast of uh, rapid fire. You don't if you're channeling rapid fire, it will not uh, cast it until rapid fire is done but you can go ahead and pause the video if you want to take down any of these and let's go ahead and go look at weak auras and now let's look at weak auras and i'm not going to spend too much time because i actually give you guys all these to try out yourself so i don't use too many weak auras there's one i wish i could uh, be working on which is to track salvo knowing uh, when salvo will be up for my next multi-shot or my next volley that's something i'm working on so hopefully that'll be up sooner rather than later the uh, other weak auras i have are going to be they're just going to to be tracking buffs or they're going to be my health bar and my focus bar in the middle of my screen so those are actually uh, weak auras but over here along the left side I have stuff for like tracking bullet storm it'll tell me how many stacks I have down here in the corner and then how many seconds left I have on that 15 second window and I've already got the weak auras made for find the mark and then for also for focusing aim focusing aim is for your tier set so whenever your next arcane shot or multi shot will crit 
this will pop up here. And then same goes for the bleed. So right after uh, using this, this one will pop up, which will tell me my next a aim shot will cause the target to bleed for 40% of that damage over six seconds. And I have some OG favorites, including trick shots, steady focus if you're running with that, true shot, and then also volley. And if you guys would like to download any of these and try them out for yourself, please, I encourage you to do so. I'm actually redoing them so they're not in English, so they're just going to be uh, based on the uh, ID of the ability, so that way if you are not an English speaker, you can still find those no problem. So if you just join my Discord, there's a link down in the description of the video, and then go to the left side, there'll be weak or as an add-ons, I believe is what I've called it, and then uh, there'll be a text document for you to download, and then simply copy paste, you come up here, you hit import, you import the super long string that I'm going to give you, and then it'll pop up on your screen, super easy. Uh, if there's any more weak auras that I'm going to add, I will do that at some point. Just keep checking on that uh, text document, or you can send me a message on Discord, and I'll be happy to send you what I have. So let's go ahead and finish out this video. Now this next section is going to be talking about our tier set for the first season of Mythic Plus and the first tier of rating, which will come from uh, the Vault of the Incarnates. Uh, so this is what the 2 and 4 set reads for you on your Marksman Hunter. So 2 set, Arcane Shot and Multi Shot critical hit cause your next aim shot to cause the target to bleed for 40% of that damage over 6 seconds. And then also the 4 set reads ranged auto attacks, otherwise known as white hits, have a 15% chance to increase your critical strike chance of your next arcane shot or multi shot by 100%. Just on like the very surface of those two abilities it doesn't sound very good it sounds kind of lackluster however uh do you have a decent percent chance on every white hit to to proc the 100 uh, percent chance to crit with that arcane shot or multi shot in our tree if you can see right here uh our tree for our target practice and for precise shots you're going to be using a lot more arcane shots or multi shots than you ever have before in the previous expansion in shadowlands so because of that they are very important they're already going to be doing up to 100% more damage every time you cast one of your aim shots. So it means it's going to be perfect for you to go right from like an aim shot right into your uh, multi shot if you're in an AoE situation or in with an arcane shot. You're going to have those built in. They're going to be doing a lot of damage, a lot more than we're used to. Uh, aim shot is not going to do the 50% plus of your overall damage that it used to in Shadowlands. And then it's just going to add more bleeds to your build. We've already been talking about uh, serrated shots. So this is actually my uh, AOE build that I have open here. But for the single target, you're going to have serrated shots. So your Serpent Sting and Bleeds are going to do more damage. You're going to have two points in that. So we have our Serpent Sting is going to do more damage. Then the Bleed from Steel Trap is going to do more damage. The Bleed from Master Marksman is going to do more damage. Like me, if you are running with Razor Fragments, there's another Bleed in your build. And then finally, don't forget the Bleed from the Four Set. Those are all going to be passive damage that you don't need to worry about. You don't have to prep for it. Just it's passive damage that happens while you're doing your rotation. Uh, I do. I think it's going to get us out of F tier. I think uh, Max. I think is he's the one that somebody shared it in my Discord that has Marksman at like F tier right now. I don't think it'll be F tier. I think we're going to see a lot more improvement as we go through the the tier. If anything, we'll just get some buffs, which will be uh, really exciting. Uh, who doesn't like to do more damage? And then kind of transitioning away from the tier set, let's go ahead and look at a couple of these items and one of them, how it's going to react to the uh, the tier set that are going to be worth looking for uh, for your Marksman Hunter from the raid uh, in the season one of um, Dragonflight. So I had to uh, whisper myself. Uh, so one of those is going to be the bow off of the final boss of the raid which is the enemy of the sky so it doesn't drop too often but uh it has an equip effect so auto attacking an enemy grants you six percent attack speed they actually changed that they didn't give us a percent earlier in the beta but now it's at a six percent sacking up to five times this bonus resets upon auto attacking a different target so that means that you want to prioritize attacking the same one over and over and over and over until it dies uh that means your attack speed is going to be uh, attacking 30 percent faster once it does get automatically uh, all the way up there stacking wise which means you're going to have a more chances to get your four set to proc because your four set 
is based on white hits. Your attack speed will be based will be giving you more uh, white hits. Now it does require you to do raid, and I probably never get the mythic version of this bow, as which is the one I'm showing you here. But there is a lot of great synergy, and that works well with uh, latent poison, for example. Uh, the poison injection, which then becomes latent poison whenever it goes on the target. So that means you're just cleaving off of one priority target, even in an AOE situation. Doesn't matter. You're just setting there uh, in just cleaving off the one guy till it dies and then moving to the uh, the next enemy. And then the other three items are actually going to be all trinkets. Uh, so we have one here, which is the Spiteful Storm. Uh, so it just has, has uh, an agility and then an equip effect, casting spells and abilities, build stacks of spite. At five, Spiteful Stormbolt uh, arcs towards the current enemy, which this also drops off of the final boss, I believe. I'll have to double check on that one. If it's not the final boss, I'll definitely put this information down in the description of the video. This does uh, X amount of damage, so it's the highest one possible. It's 15k over three seconds, but then it comes back, and you can basically just do this over and over and over and over until either you die or the enemy dies, and this is going to be a very strong trinket, I think. I'm really looking forward to get my hands on it. And then there's a couple of other items here, one of those being the Whispering Incarnate Icon. It just gives gives you a fair bit of uh, crit strike, not just base, and then it also infuses that stat for other uh, people in your party, and that's always a good thing. Uh, and then finally, the last item, and this is an item I'm really excited to get my hands on for Mythic Plus. So you, it's an on-use trinket, uh, it's called uh, Storm Eater's Boon, so it just gives you agility, and then it has an on-use ability. So you accept the storm, becoming the primal air elemental, and immobilizing yourself for 10 seconds. While you're in this form, winds swirl around you, so you'd want to make sure and like, basically do like a living bomb thing, or like hellfire that you used to have. Like demon fire maybe uh, if you are a warlock you just run in the middle and you just pop this thing down you can't do anything damage wise but you're going to be pulsing damage to every target in the area so it'll be hitting for 11.6k and then that intensifies every second for that um 10 seconds and then you'll be doing 10 percent more damage each and every time now this is a three minute cooldown and it's not really great on bosses, for example, but on trash, this is going to absolutely decimate trash. I was watching one guy on his stream when he was doing some higher beta keys, and this Storm Eater's Boon was absolutely annihilating huge pulls. More damage than you ever could do on your hunter. This boon does so much damage. Like, it is absolutely insane. I'm surprised it has not been uh, nerfed. I think it did catch one nerf early on, uh, but even still this is going to be a fun item i cannot wait to get my hands on it and uh, those are just a few of the items so far i'll probably put a video out uh, later on in the next couple of weeks for other items to shoot for but for now those are some great items to keep your eye on and see if you can get those early in the tier to really maximize your damage and that's it for my first guide here for Dragonflight. I really thought that when Covenants were going to go away, these wouldn't be almost 40 minutes. Yet, I apparently love to hear the sound of my own voice, and I love to talk, apparently. So, uh, I do apologize that this went a lot longer. It won't go this long in future seasons, because I did a, do that first bet on what was new uh, for Dragonflight, which it won't be new uh, come Season 2, 3, 4, however many we have here in this expansion. But as for Marksman Hunter, I am not afraid of people putting out tier lists saying that uh, Marksman is like one of the worst down there with uh, Rhett Paladin. It is okay. I'm going to play my Marksman Hunter because I enjoy the play style and I'm going to do well. Even back in BFA, I think we're going to have a similar situation that we did in BFA. That Marksman was so bad that nobody wanted to invite it to a group or nobody wanted to play it. But I'm going to be here to show you guys that Marksman Hunter can still do well. It can be fun, engaging to play, and it can really fulfill your archer fantasy that I get out of it. So thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Be sure to Follow me over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mr. Eggplant. We're almost getting closer to 6,000 subscribers here on the channel. If I make it to 6,000, we'll do another giveaway. It'll probably end up being 60 days of WoW time. Uh, who knows? If this video does well, maybe we'll get to 6,000 sooner rather than later. But thank you guys so much. Best of luck in Dragonflight. I'm so excited. Come hang out in my Discord. Let's chat it up. You guys can talk to me at any time, and I will have more videos out, including Mythic Plus and Raid Kills, very soon. So... Thanks for watching.